Well, praise the Lord, praise God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What a great day. And just to think that God gives us a revelation so that our spirits or our spirit as an individual can become uh, quickened. Revelation always moves you to another uh, relationship with God. And so I just thank the Lord this morning as we come to this broadcast about the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. And that is very, very important. And it's like God is saying, give me back my battle. Give me back my battle. And on the screen, you can see there, I've got let go and let God. It's time to let go and let God. Why hold on to something that God knows best how to fight. God doesn't want you and I to get entangled in things that is a distraction and that allows our the atmosphere of our minds to become contaminated. Because if we don't let go and let God, then we are going to become so intoxicated with the problem instead of the God who solves all problems. Well, you know, I always start a broadcast. I've got my little uh, promise book. As you can see, it's been worn a lot. This is the sweat of holding it in your hand. And uh, let your little promise book always bring uh, like a jump start. You jump start your spirit uh, with prayer. Now, when you pray, God only is obligated to stand over his word to perform it. So today, I'm reading here from Hebrews 10, 36. For ye have not need, for ye have need, for ye have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise of God. And then I pray basically like this. I will say, Father, I thank you that you grant me the patience that I need so that I will not run ahead of you. Help me, Lord, that I will not lag. Help me, Father, that I will keep in perfect step with your divine will for my life, so that I may receive that promise that burns within my heart, the promise that you have granted me as a desire, the promise that you have granted me as a dream, as a vision towards my future. And I thank you that you do not have any plans to harm or hurt me, but through your patience and me falling in with your will, that I will be able to taste and see how good the Lord my God is. Hallelujah. That's a little prayer but a potent prayer. We're doing part three today on uh, give me back my battle. Let go and let God. Wow. Just those two uh, or just those words. Let go and let God. It is so, so meaningful, beloved. When we know how to let go. Jesus says, cast your burdens upon me. Anyone who carries a burden will become burdened. And there is a way to let go 
So let's go right into the teaching this morning. And uh, let me see what we can bring up here. There we go. And the sound is all sorted out. We can hear the sound. Glory to God. Okay. My apologies for yesterday. It's just there's a lot of technical things here. But uh, so w when we talk about the battle is the Lord's, look at Gideon. God greets Gideon through the angel. God greets him. Oh, mighty man of Valor. And Gideon does not even hear the greeting. Gideon says, oh, we are the smallest clan. Gideon says, uh, uh, you know, where is this God of our forefathers who used to do all these miracles? God never asked Gideon about what he's going through. God never asked Gideon, how are you? God never asked Gideon, uh, to talk about his circumstances, God was just greeting Gideon through his angel. Oh, mighty man of valor. You see, God knows how to press a hot button in our lives. God knows that when he presses that hot button, there's going to be a response and the way we respond to God is the way that we will receive. Remember the little story in the New Testament? Uh, the uh, Syrophoenician woman, her daughter was demon-possessed. And she says, come and heal my daughter. And Jesus says, how can I take the bread that belongs to the children and cast it to the dogs, the outcasts, the Samaritans during that time? But watch this. She said... She said, she said, even the dogs will eat the crumbs under the table. And Jesus says, for such a reply, there you go. For such a reply, go, your daughter is healed. God greets Gideon. Gideon's reply is not optimistic. Gideon's reply is pessimistic. Gideon's actually, uh, it's a reply and a response. Gideon's response is, look at us. We are just, uh, we're under oppression and you call me mighty. In other words, God, are you feeling okay today? <laughs> Have you ever been in your mind and say, hello, is heaven okay today? You know, don't you understand what I'm going through here on the earth? Up there in heaven, everything is hunky-dory. Yes. And let's just be real with the Word of God. We cannot be superficial when it comes to the Word of God. Those days are gone. God wants us to be real with people because we're serving a real God through a real gospel, the Word, and through a real people. And Gideon, his problem was he had Gideonitis. He had Gideonitis. It's quite a disease that I just make it up. Gideonitis. And Gideon saw himself through his condition. As you can see there on your screen, I put there. Gideon saw himself through his condition instead of his future position. And that's criteria to all of us. The way you see yourself is the way the enemy will see you. If you see yourself... If you see yourself as defeated, that's exactly how the enemy will see you. Numbers chapter 13. Remember, uh, the uh, 12 spies went out, 10 of them. They saw themselves as grass shoppers. I mean hoppers. Grass hoppers. And that's the way the enemy perceived them. God greets Gideon. And I want you to understand here that God was speaking to God himself in Gideon. God was seeing God inside of Gideon. God was not looking at Gideon through Gideon. And that's why God says, 
you mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. And until Gideon renewed his mind, the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon with the word in your mouth. The word of God is the sword of God that battles. It's uh, the word of God is a, a two-edged sword. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4, 12, you should find it there. All right. So let's move to this next uh, example. And I'm going to bring this up on your screen. But before I do, I want, let me just talk to you a little bit. Give me back my battle, God says. Give me back my battle. The battle is the Lord's. Beloved, if you and I are going to strive with uh, holding on to a battle, and you know the problem many times is this, that we think unless we fight, we're not doing something good. Unless we fight, we feel we're not doing something good about our Christian walk. The only fight that you must enter is the fight of, and you know it, is the fight of faith. God wants us to keep up the faith, keep up your optimism, keep up your belief system. Uh, check out your belief system. Where is your belief system? Are you getting anxious easily? Are you getting fearful? Are you getting intimidated? Are you feel that, do you feel that your circumstances are controlling you? Do you fear that, uh, that uh, you are busy losing it? You're not losing anything. God can never go lost. God is an ever-present God in a time of trouble, beloved. God cannot go last. So fear not. But fight a good fight of faith. Faith says, I'm going to believe God's word. Faith says, I'm going to pray God into the situation. You, you see, sometimes we want to pray the problem into the situation. When Peter was in trouble with Jesus... And because of strife, and uh, the enemy went to Jesus and demanded to sift Peter because they had strife. Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? And Peter, of course, he was quite an outspoken uh, individual with strife in his life. And so Jesus says, Satan has demanded to sift you, but I have prayed for you. I've prayed for you. See, God has already taken care of your battle. God has already taken care of your battle. You have an intercessor in heaven, and he's already prayed you through. And Jesus says, when you have turned back, you strengthen your brethren. Glory to God. See? Likewise with you and I. Before, uh, oh, let me just say this. Jesus did not focus on the problem. He didn't say, oh God, my Father, I pray for this strife, and I pray for this, and I pray for... Jesus says, I pray that your faith will not fail. Jesus did not speak to the mountain, but he surrounded the mountain by faith. And by faith, we enforce the defeat of Satan and the victory of Christ Jesus. We emphasize by faith. Amen. Now, let's get back here. All right. With this slide. I never know how these broadcasts will go because I just let the Holy Spirit take over. This is our last little example for today. Okay, for today. Now, Daniel is in the lion's den because of his prayer love. Daniel's condition did not determine Determine his position. In Gideon's case, Gideon's condition overrode his mind and determined his position. Because when the angel of the Lord greeted Gideon, let me get back there. When the angel of the Lord greeted Gideon, it, the first reaction was, I'm the smallest. We're the smallest clan. Where's this God of miracles my forefathers talked about? Look at us. We're under oppression. Look, nothing goes well for us. See what I'm saying? 
His condition did not match his position. God addressed his future position and not his present condition. Let's get over back here with Daniel. Daniel, in his case, he was positioned in his prayer life. Remember every day, where is it? My little scripture, you know, you pray the scriptures. Remember the little promise book? Yes, the little promise book. Pray scriptures. Pray scriptures. Pray scriptures. And by the way, I'm just about finished. Uh, it's a new program uh, in putting together a prayer, a practical prayers. All these prayers that I'm praying, I'm going to let people have access to it on Amazon. And you can download it very soon. And that should, uh, and I'm, I'm just trusting God it will help somebody. Amen. So here's Daniel. He prayed three times a day. And then uh, life was not happy with him because he was a prayer warrior. And people around you, when you pray a lot, you're going to make them nervous. You're going to, uh, you know, upset some. And they will begin to attack maybe your integrity or sometimes Satan wants to attack your weakest spot to distract you from your prayer life. And he will attack you by getting you so busy and caught up with other stuff instead of praying, 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 praying. And even when you read the Bible, beloved, we should let the Bible read us and not us just reading the Bible. You can read many books, but there's only one book that will read you, and that is the Bible. Hallelujah. Once we've read the uh, Scripture, what are we doing with those Scriptures? The moment you meditate upon it, the moment you meditate upon what you've just read, and you allow your mind to just revolve around some thoughts and, and so forth, you are strengthening your inner being. You're strengthening the way that your spirit needs to rise up. You see, your spirit needs breakfast, lunch, supper, through the Word of God. Now, let's get back here with Daniel. So Daniel, look at that picture, beloved. He's in the lion's den. He's standing with his hands behind him. Maybe his hands were handcuffed, tied together. Who knows? And those lions are looking at him with outrageous looks. And I mean, they are about to uh, grill him or about to eat him, about to destroy him. I mean, the mouth of some are open. There's some other lions there. Look at that picture. They ready to, I mean, they are aggressive. And he's just standing there with the peace of his God. Why? Because Daniel did not allow his uh, condition. Daniel did not allow uh, uh, his uh, condition. Please understand. Daniel did not allow his condition to determine his position. He positioned himself in his God. He positioned himself in his God. And before we close, we're just about going to close within a matter of a minute and a half. Daniel positioned himself in his God. They said, listen, you cannot pray. There's no such thing. The Bible says pray on every occasion. There's nobody in this world that can stop you from praying. And if you yield to that instruction, you've yielded to an idolatrous instruction. Okay? We are to pray on every occasion. In fact, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Prayer has the power to instantly connect you with heaven. And prayer can connect you across the world instantly. Prayer is so powerful. And so Daniel's prayer, hallelujah, his position in prayer overrode his condition. And he shut the mouths of the lions, beloved. He shut the mouths of the lions. Come on, somebody. Daniel shut the mouths 
of the lions. Look at that picture. He shut the mouths of the lions. And he came out of that onslaught. And God promoted him. And Daniel's God was established as the God in the midst of a Babylonian society. God bless you. My wife is there. Love you. Thank you, my Lizzie. God bless you, Sharon. God bless you. We must allow God to be first in whatever we face. If you put out your frustration there first, or your anger, or your disappointment, or your discouragement, then the battle is not the Lord's. You're allowing the flesh to overtake. And your flesh has been crucified as a co-heir in Christ at Calvary, you were already crucified. So do not allow the flesh to be resurrected. Your spirit needs to be resurrected. So you can speak resurrected language. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you for tuning in to this short broadcast today. Help me to get some more people to watch this program if you don't mind. Let's be uh, kingdom distributors of the bread or the manna from heaven and get some other people also to watch. And if you have a God bless you, Karen, God bless you and family. And if you have, you know, a, a better time that I need to adjust the time, then just uh, give me some of your commands. I'm here to serve. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for sowing a little seed or a big seed, if you want to spell a million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N with a S. <laughs> God bless you for sowing a seed. Make out that check to AIM. That's Apostolic Insight Ministries for uh, box 485. And uh, you can also op obviously get a tax uh, credit at the end of the year. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. We love you. And hopefully we'll see you all soon at some main celebration. I'm planning, perhaps I'm praying about it, to have a massive one evening or a weekend conference right here at our little church. We have a little church. It's not that big, but our hearts are big. Hallelujah. And I'm just faithful in serving God in everything. Hallelujah. But the larger church, we're reaching people from different states, different nations, and so on and so forth. God bless you. Until next time, remember, Jesus is, oh yes, that's right, he is Lord. God bless you. Thank you. Bye now.